Okay, friends, here we are back in the Evergreen Building at the College of Southern Idaho for another video in our Rocks with Wilsey series. Uh, we have spent the last couple of episodes looking at igneous rocks, and we're kind of wrapping up our igneous rock uh, lessons here. Uh, we're going to conclude with today's video and then one more after today's on igneous rocks, and then we'll turn our attention to uh, the sedimentary rocks. And so we've covered the intrusive igneous rocks, uh, granite, granodiorite, diorite, gabbro. We've covered basalt and all its many wonders and splendors, one of my favorite rocks. Uh, and today we're going to focus on andesite, dacite, and rhyolite. So these are rocks that erupt from volcanoes, but they're at the felsic to intermediate end of the spectrum. So they're going to have more silica, they're going to have some different minerals, perhaps, or at least percentage-wise, different minerals than what we've seen what we've seen with the basalt. So these are extrusive or volcanic rocks. They erupt from volcanoes. Um, a good chance, depending on where you live, especially if you live out west, that there's plenty of the, these rocks uh, in your area because they're just a common rock that we see in a lot of volcanic environments. So, um, so let's jump right in. This is kind of a what I hope is a nice summary of what we've covered so far with our igneous rocks. So um, we have covered basalt and we've covered all these four here across the bottom. So notice here our rows are distinguished by extrusive and intrusive. So rocks that form when magma cools underground. And we know they'll be intrusive because they'll have a phaneritic texture, meaning that the crystals will be large and the crystals will be interlocking, all squished together. And so if we have that type of texture, it tells us that the, the magma cooled slowly, the crystals are large, and depending on the composition of the minerals, uh, that will dictate what column we go to here. So in general, as we move across this table from left to right, the rocks are getting um, darker in color in general because they're, they're, they contain higher percentages or portions of mafic minerals. Mafic minerals are the dark minerals. Felsic minerals are the light minerals, okay? If they're intermediate, they can tend to be about 50-50 right down the middle. Okay, if they're extrusive, which is what we're looking at today, uh, we'll know that rocks are extrusive by the textures that they contain. So if they're aphanitic, meaning they're all kind of fine-grained, tiny crystals. If they're porphyritic, meaning they have big and little crystals because it started cooling slowly underground but eventually erupted. Maybe it has vesicles, which are the gas bubbles in the rock. So rhyolite, dacite, andesite, that's what we're gonna focus on today. Um, just to give you a bit of a visual here, I'm gonna show you what this looks like uh, in real, as real rocks here. So those same four rocks that I just showed you on this table here, I've actually got laid out here in the same order. So we've got granite on the left, granodiorite, diorite, gabbro. So you can see the overall increase in mafic minerals getting darker as you move left to right. You can see that the crystals are big enough to see and they're all squished together interlocking. So that tells us that we have a, uh, a phaneritic texture, okay? And then as we look up here at the extrusive rocks, we can see the same sort of relationships where they get darker overall in color as we move left to right, going from felsic to mafic. Um, and we can see that the textures are a little bit different here. So we might have uh, very small crystals, small enough that they're um, you know, less than a millimeter, like here in this basalt, these tiny, tiny little specks in here are crystals. We can also see this basalt has a few holes in it, these gas bubbles we call vesicles that tells us it's extrusive. Okay, if we look over here at this andesite, we can see some of these big crystals in here, but the big crystals are kind of floating in a background of very, fine grain material. So this would be a porphyritic texture, okay? So I thought it'd be helpful to kind of not just show you the table, but actually show you how the, the actual samples look uh, co and correspond with that. Um, okay, last couple things here, and then we'll get to our rocks of the day. Um, so our textures in andesites, dacites, and rhyolites are going to tend to be aphanitic or porphyritic. We're going to see a lot of porphyritic rocks today. Remember, porphyritic just means that it started to cool slowly forming big crystals while the magma was underground. But then ultimately that magma was brought to the surface, erupted from a volcano. Those crystals were carried with the magma. 
Um, and then everything else around those crystals cooled very quickly to form tiny crystals. And so that's why we see the, the disparity uh, and the difference between the crystal sizes with that. Um, all the rocks we're gonna look at today, andesite, dacite, rhyolite, generally erupt from what I like to call the naughty volcanoes, the volcanoes that are much more explosive. Uh, you might be wondering, well, what about the nice volcanoes? Well, we've looked at those. The, the nice volcanoes tend to mainly produce basalt. Volcanoes like cinder cones or shield volcanoes or fissure eruptions, uh, places like Hawaii or Iceland, those are the places where we will see a lot of basalt and the nice volcanoes. So where are the naughty volcanoes? What kind of volcanoes are these? Well, they tend to be lava domes like we see at the summit of Mount St. Helens. Um, Along the east side of the Sierras, there's a series of lava domes. There's a few in Idaho, including Big Southern Butte. Uh, calderas would be places like Yellowstone, uh, the Long Valley Caldera in California. Uh, Crater Lake in Oregon is an example of a caldera. And then of course the stratovolcanoes, the classic cone-shaped mountains like Mount Shasta, Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Fuji. Um, all of those are great examples of stratovolcanoes. So these are the, the, the vents or the volcanic edifices uh, that tend to produce the three types of rocks we're looking at today. So uh, let's go ahead and get to our first rock type and then I'll show you some samples here in a second. So a little, little, more, little more words, you can hang it, hang with me here. Um, so andesite, andesite tends to be intermediate in composition. So it has more silica than basalt um, but not as much as like a rhyolite. So if you need a percentage, there's the percentages. But again, we can't, we can't quantify this in hand sample. You can't really look at a rock and be able to tell me what the silica composition is. This usually, this level of detail needs to be done uh, in a lab. So what are some more helpful ways we can tell what an andesite is? Well, it usually is porphyritic in texture. That might be helpful. Here's some of the essential minerals we, we tend to see in andesite. So plagioclase feldspar, uh, peroxine amphibole, remember these are two mafic minerals, so these are going to tend to be dark in color. Plage, remember, is typically white in rocks. It also has two cleavage planes at 90 degrees, so it'll tend to form rectangulars, rectangles or, or squares. Um, the color in andesite is kind of a medium to dark gray. I know that's kind of like a vague, you know, reference in terms of color, um, but kind of the way I think of it is sort of this medium kind of medium gray, but it can be darker gray. So there is some variability in color. And andesites, something that might help you with, with associating its origin and where it's found, is this is a very common rock type to find at stratovolcanoes and at subduction zones. Most stratovolcanoes are along subduction zones where one plate is diving beneath the other, places like the Andes, the Cascades, the Aleutian Islands, um, places like that. And you might be able to make sense of all of this is if you look at the word. So the word andesite uh, has Andes in it. And of course the Andes mountains are a, a, a string of these stratovolcanoes located along a subduction zone. So let's go ahead and look at uh, a couple samples I have of andesite, see what we think here. Um, so let's start with this one. I don't remember where I found this one, but we can see some really nice crystals in here so we can see Nice plagioclase crystal here. Um, we can see some of the mafix in here as well. Uh, a little bit of probably amphibole there. You can see some of these cleavage planes at 90 degrees, right? So that's showing you um, the plage. Um, some of these black ones in here, looks like that one might be pyroxene, something like that. Um, yeah, so there's, there's an andesite, good porphyritic texture. We've got some large crystals in here, but everything else is small. Notice the big crystals aren't stuck next to each other. They're sort of floating around in more of a fine-grained matrix. Let's check out another one. Oh, this one I do know where I got. This one, this one takes me back many moons ago to where I did my master's research down in Baja, California in Mexico. There was a series of these andesite dikes in the field area I was working in, um, and that's where I collected this sample. So beautiful uh, amphibole crystals in here. You can see the cleavage planes in there, but these dark needle-like crystals in here are all amphibole crystals. Um, there is plage in here, but it tends to be smaller in this particular sample, so it's the white in here. And this is a good example of what I like to call the kind of medium gray. If you sort of take all these big crystals out, if you just sort of suck them out or kind of try to ignore them and focus on the, the color of the, the ground mass, the area behind 
uh, or surrounding those big crystals. Uh, to me, this is a nice solid kind of medium gray color. So uh, again, that, that may be kind of helpful to you. But um, so with these andesites, we see either plage can be big crystals in them, or sometimes it's the, the dark minerals that form the larger crystals in, in these porphyritic rocks. So a nice one there. Uh, another one here, this one's fairly porphyritic. A lot of the crystals are actually quite small, um, but we do get a few of these bigger crystals in here. Again, the, the needle-like amphibole crystals, which are uh, an essential ingredient of the, of the andesite. So a couple, a couple andesite samples there for your, for your enjoyment. Um, some characteristic samples I had. Uh, let's go to the next rock type, which is dacite. And so dacite is going to be uh, in between intermediate and felsic in composition. And remember, it's, it's the equivalent of the granodiorite with the intrusive rock. So a little bit more silica. Um, it is too often porphyritic, just like andesite. Um, now, as we look at the essential minerals here, it's got plage just like andesite does, but it's going to have more quartz. And maybe that's... The, that's the most important thing. Um, as I've tried to get better at differentiating andesites and dacites, that's kind of what I'm looking for. If I'm not seeing that in a rock like the ones I just showed you, then I tend to classify it more as an andesite. But if I can see some of the quartz in there, maybe you know 20% or so quartz, and maybe even a little bit of case bar in there, uh, that will tend to bump me over to the dacite kind of group. Uh, and these, again, associated similarly with andesites, uh, stratovolcanoes, and also lava domes. That's not an exclusive list, but just some examples of where we might see uh, day sites. So a couple examples of what I think and hope are good day sites. At least that's the way I've classified them uh, over the years. Uh, let's see. So we've got the big plage crystals in here. Um, but we can also see some of this quartz in here as well. Where's my little pointer thing? So we can see some of this kind of slightly translucent uh, quartz in there. There's some nice, um, those are probably biotites, these really shiny black ones. This one has this almost hexagon shape here. Uh, another one there. So we're starting to see some different mafics forming in there. There's an amphibole in there, a little needle-like thing. Here's a nice big, that's a beautiful biotite there with the perfect hexagon shape around it. But notice we're starting to see, even though the gray color is kind of the same as what we might see with an andesite, we're getting a few different minerals popping up. We didn't see really any biotite in the, in the andesite, although you can get a little bit in there. But now we're seeing some appreciable amounts of it here in this dacite. The other thing that might be a good comparison is, remember, as we move from andesite to dacite, we're moving towards more felsic rocks. And notice that there's quite a few dark minerals in the andesite. Whereas we come over here to the day site, whoops, um, and there's far fewer um, mafic minerals in this sample. So lots of plage. Plage is the dominant mineral. Um, there's some nice cleavage planes at 90 degrees in there. Um, yeah, really nice sample. I think this is a pretty good example. This other one here, um, I also believe is a day site. At least that's what I'm stick. I'm sticking to it till someone tells me otherwise. Again, beautiful white. Uh, plage crystals um, with the cleavage planes well displayed there. Um, and again, not a lot of mafic minerals in here. So it, it seems to be have less mafic minerals than what we see with the, uh, with the andesite. And notice there's some quartz in here. We're starting to see some of this kind of translucent um, gray kind of poking through here. These are little bits and crystals of quartz. So, so there's our day site. And then to uh, wrap up our last rock in the series today is rhyolite. And rhyolite's gonna be our most silica rich rock. Um, so felsic in terms of its composition, it's gonna be dominated by felsic or light colored minerals, having very few mafic or dark minerals. Um, Texture-wise, porphyritic or athenitic, those two are totally uh, possible with these rocks. Rhyolites tend to be a little less porphyritic than the andesites and dacites, at least that's my experience. Um, minerals we see in there, quartz for sure, um, case bar for sure, plage, um, yeah, but not as much as we see with the andesites and the, the dacites. So plage is going to be sort of secondary a bit to these two here. 
Uh, and then, yeah, we'll see some mafic minerals in there, a few little dark specks here and there, but they're going to be uh, pretty minor, probably you know 20% or less of the total um, makeup of the rock. And then color-wise, these tend to be much lighter in color, light gray, maybe even a little bit pinkish uh, due to the case bar content, or even a little bit whitish, depending on uh, exactly how it's crystallized. And then a couple of volcanoes that are typical of rhyolites would be calderas and lava domes. So I have a couple samples here of the, the rhyolite. I've got this uh, white one here, kind of light gray. Uh, again, we can see some of the quartz crystals in here. Um, it's hard to do this while I'm looking through the, the camera and trying to look at the sample. So these are quartz pieces in here. There's overall some sort of banding in here as well. I can't remember where I got this one. Um, but this is a rhyolite. May have actually been ash at one point, um, but it, compositionally it still would be a rhyolite. Uh, here's one that's a little more pinkish. This one's actually a core sample uh, from drilling. And so let's see, what's the best view? This, this side's a little more weathered, but we can still see uh, some of the some of the quartz crystals in here. Some of, there's a case bar maybe. Some of the, uh, the cleavage planes there. Yeah, just you know, overall lighter in color, and it just doesn't have the dark minerals, the dark, the mafic ones. This this surface is a little bit weathered here, um, as is this. Probably should have cut it open on in the middle here. And this obviously is where the this is pretty fresh though here, where the you just get a little bit of the. Uh, the, the cutting tools on it. So there's a nice uh, either plaid or case bar crystal right there. Um, and then this rhyolite here, this is typical of what we have here in southern Idaho. So they tend to sometimes break uh, or form these kind of flat chips um, and they weather a little bit darker. So they're tough to identify on the weathered surface, but when you break them open, um, they're a little bit more instructive. So we can see some of the the case bar crystals in here. Um, let's hold that really still and see what we see here. Uh, a little bit of quartz probably in there. Yeah, and this would be a good example of, you know, it's mostly affinitic. There are a few bigger crystals in here. It's kind of like affinitic porphyritic kind of in the on the boundary between those two, um, but kind of a, a lighter gray color overall. And again, the lack of mafic minerals in here, um, distinguishing this as, as a rhyolite. So um, hopefully that helps a bit. So, so there we go. Um, we did it. Good job. Go team. Uh, so andesite, dacite, rhyolite. We covered this group of volcanic rocks. We have covered all eight of these rocks here on my handy dandy table. And next time we will focus on pumice, tuff, and obsidian. And that will wrap up and conclude our igneous rock series. And then we'll turn our attention to um, the sedimentary rocks. So until next time, we'll see you. Thanks for joining me here with Rocks with Wilsey from the College of Southern Idaho.